Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. I'm here with my second entry in my favorite first time watches of 2023 series. This is for the month of February, obviously. And I've got a handful of movies here, some interesting stuff. Um, so let's just dive right into it, you know? So, starting us off, we have Halloween Night from 2009. This is a film from Mark Polonia of the Polonia Brothers. Um, iconic cult shot on video filmmakers. Um, honestly, absolute trash film are tours in my opinion. Um, and here we have um, their Scarecrow slasher film. Uh, basically, this weird guy gets bullied... Um, and he builds a scarecrow in his backyard and, like, does a black magic ritual to bring it to life. Um, and it goes around, you know, killing the people that torment him. It's a pretty simple little film, very low budget. Um, one of the, like, teenage characters in the film is, like, literally was, you see his ID in the film and it says he was born in the 50s. And it's just like, wow, they really did, they really, they really dropped the ball on that one, huh? <laughs> so, this is just an absolute cheese fest. It's really fun. It's um, got a really cool stop motion thing at the end that I'm not going to say anything else about. It's uh, I'll say it's stop motion and that's it. Um, but there's some stop motion in, at the very end that's very, very cool. Um, especially for how low budget this movie is. Um, yeah, um, I would give Halloween Night a 4 out of 5. This is a great seasonal, low budget, little cheese fest, um, that is, uh, at least as of now, streamable on some formats, and I know it has a DVD, uh, out there somewhere, so, um, this one shouldn't be too hard to get your hands on. Oh god, this one. Up next is Eaten Alive, A Taste for Revenge from 1999. This is a Wave production. Um, for those of you who don't know about that, watch the documentary Mail Order Murder and it will um, pretty much explain what Wave productions, what Wave is. Um, but uh, basically, this is a 90s shot on video vor fetish film um and it's it's um it's one of the most unhinged things i've ever seen in my entire life honestly uh it's hard to put into words like how much of a brain bomb this one is this one gets a perfect score from me simply because it left me pretty much speechless um and i think it it, it says it all itself um but yeah eaten alive a tasteful revenge gets a perfect score from me up next is the most recent Ty West film, which is Pearl from 2022. Pearl is the prequel to X, also from 2022. X was a movie I saw when it came out, and uh, I thought it was very good. I really liked... My favorite thing about it was the editing. It it felt like... if It was edited exactly like old 70s exploitation films. And um, I think the style and a lot of the cinematography is emulated very well. But I'm not talking about X. I'm talking about Pearl. Pearl is a very different movie from X. And in fact, a lot of people who don't like X are pretty big fans of Pearl. Which 
isn't surprising. Pearl is like, you know, um, a, it's, it's a character study of basically the killer from X and, um, I think it's a pretty good one. I, I don't think this is like the, one of the greatest character studies of all time or anything, or it's that complex, but it's a fun, violent, um, you know, very atmospheric, uh, I think. I think it's got a very interesting kind of bright atmosphere juxtaposed with these weird, um, darker elements and murder. Uh, it's a very interesting juxtaposition because, like, visually this film is, is, um, visually, uh, Pearl is, like, emulating films from, like, the 50s. It's, like, very bright. The colors are very vibrant, vibrant, and, uh, I, I like that about it, but it also feels a little gaudy at the same time. I don't know. That's just a small complaint I have, but overall, I like Pearl quite a bit. Not as much as X, but it's definitely got me excited to see what the next one, which is Maxine, is going to be all about. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give Pearl a, a three and a half out of five. Um, I just, just for context, I gave Pearl, I gave X a four. Oh God, this next one. How am I going to, how am I going to explain this next one to you? So, um... There's this film from the 70s that I reviewed on my channel years ago. That review is probably lost to time at this point. But it was a film called Forced Entry. And it stars the, the famous porn star Harry Reams. And um, the guy who made that movie, which that movie is about a deranged uh, Vietnam like veteran who discharged... like. Vietnam veteran who's like, you know, deranged and psychopathic and he goes on a murder rape spree. Um, that's what this film is about. And it's a porn film. Um, the guy that made that made the next movie, which is 1977's Water Power. So Water Power is a movie I'm going to have a hard time kind of trying to justify why I like it and why I um, appreciate it. Uh... So, yeah, um, basically, Water Power is a film about a guy that goes around forcibly giving women enemas at gunpoint. Um, it's, it's deranged, it's sleazy, it's, you know definitely atmospheric like for a hardcore porn film from the 1970s water power has a really great atmosphere and kind of scuzzy just unpleasant vibe to it um it's it's basically taxi driver but if travis had like an enema fetish and went around like you know, raping and, 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 and giving enemas to women and shit instead of, instead of murdering people like he did in, in Taxi Driver. Um, God, this movie is just like, the performance from, from Jamie Gillis, the lead actor who, who plays the, the enema bandit, uh, himself, um, is is absolutely like again for a 70s porn film really great scary unsettling performance like holy shit i'm blown away what the fuck <laughs> um i don't recommend water power to anybody nor do i recommend uh acknowledging its existence at all however I think this is also, like, kind of a really good movie, despite it maybe being, you know, really exploitative and offensive. So, 
I don't know. This is one of those times where I'm not going to give this film a rating. I'm just going to say, hey, this was something I watched that I found interesting that I want to share, but not in, not endorse or recommend. <laughs> um, there are other people out there who would full on recommend this movie and uh, to, to, to fan. Actually, you know what? Strike that. If you're a fan of exploitation films, I recommend Water Power. Other than that, this is not a a movie to for anybody. Next is the 1967 kaiju film, King Kong Escapes. This is the um to this is one of the Toho produced King Kong films, uh, and it was a co-production with the U.S. So it had like an American cast. Um, and, you know, but, like, a lot of the effects and stuff were, were, were done in Japan and stuff like that. Um, sort of, sort of like the green slime, I guess. Um, that being said, uh, King Kong Escapes is essentially about King Kong escaping. Actually, no, it's about these people that need Kong to dig through, like, ice in order to find an ancient, like, so in order to find something important in order to get their hands on something. And to do it, they've built a Robo-Kong, a Mecha-Kong. And this movie is just, just basically all built up to Mecha-Kong and King Kong fighting. And that's the best part. That's it. Um, it's a fun kaiju film. The plot is kind of nonsense that I don't remember very well, hence why I'm having a hard time remembering it. Um, but it's, it's a great time. It's fun. The miniatures are fun. It's, it's cheesy. If you like kaiju films, if you like King Kong, of course you should see this. And it's directed by Ishiro Honda, who is like really great at making these movies. All right, next is Clerks 3 from 2022. So, um, this movie isn't good. Like, for the most part at all. Um, it's not that funny. Uh, the writing is kind of, is, is not great. Um, the production values are all right, I guess. But f for the most part, I wouldn't call this a good movie. Um, however, as somebody who has always held, like, especially the first Clerks movie, very close to his heart, um, and the second one, maybe a little further away, um, but, like, still, as a, it's still, like, a pretty enjoyable. Um, Clerks 3, on the other hand, is essentially a meta comedy about the production of clerks um told through a th 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 told basically um within universe uh as randall has a heart attack and nearly dies and he wants to make a movie about his experiences working at the working at the quick stop and the video store um and it's basically, yeah, just a, about the production of Clerks. Like, they, you know, they basically make Clerks. Um, this movie made me cry twice for various reasons. Um, things happen to characters that are kind of unexpected. Um, and it it's kind of sad. Like, this movie is, is overall, like, a lot more sad than it is funny. And that's the, like, big, that's one of the big problems with it. Not saying that that's, like, always a problem here. Not, that, not saying that that's, like, you know, always, it, it, that can always be a problem. Because sometimes that can be a good thing. But, like, you know, if a drama film is not very funny, but it's pretty sad then, like, the, you know, it could be good. That's what I'm saying. But it, it, it's not a Clerks movie. It doesn't feel like a Clerks movie. It's, it's just... It, 
It's just, I think that the ending to Clerks 2 is, like, a better ending to the to the series um, than this ending. <laughs> but what we've got is what we've got, and I can't, um, I can't do anything about it. That being said, I don't really recommend this one. It's not great, but I kind of wanted to mention it just to kind of, you know, show some variety, show that I'm watching more than just my usual crap um sometimes it's 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 other crap uh yeah let's get on it with it and now we have the new m night movie um knock at the cabin from 2023 um so maybe i should explain my 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 the thoughts on m night Shyamalan's movies so uh m night is a very interesting director i would definitely say that he's an arguably an artor but like not a great artor filmmaker um i think that his movies are can can range in quality but like for the most part he's he's mainly missed with me um the main things i remember about his filmography was that he did the last airbender movie which was bad and he also did After Earth, which was bad, and um, he did Signs, which was funny. Signs is hilarious, actually. Um, what else did this man do? He did The Sixth Sense, which is fine. That's that's another one that I'm okay with. Um, Unbreakable, I think, is actually really good. Split, I think, is... Uh, I feel... A w I feel a certain way about Split that I can't explain in words. Um, but I'm not a fan of Split, I should say. Uh, haven't seen Glass. You know? So, uh, that's that's that. But I don't think M. Night is an awful director. Also, The Happening is kind of hilarious, too. But I don't think M. Night is like a completely awful director. I just think he's a little weird. Um, a little quirky, even. Um you know basically knock at the cabin is about a family that is at a cabin in the woods and suddenly some fucking weirdos show up saying that they need to sacrifice one of them willingly one of the family members willingly they need to sacrifice one of themselves um or else the world will end and it's basically like a you know chamber drama it all takes place pretty much in one room um that being like the main living area of this cabin in the woods um honestly there's some there's some really good performances here dave batista like brings it home like he is great in it honestly he's very 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 uh uncomfortable um and 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 kind of creepy um Everybody else is fine. There's, there's, you know, uh, the dialogue with how M. Night writes dialogue, um, the dialogue works for, like, the cultist characters, but it doesn't work for the, the other characters, the family. Um, the dialogue feels weird coming out of their mouths. Um, uh, but other than that, this movie honestly kept me thoroughly engaged and interested, uh, both times I watched it. Um, you know, I wasn't, not saying this is a great movie, I'm not blown away by it, but this is probably my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie, probably. Um, you know, he's, he's, maybe, I don't know, I kind of like Unbreakable, though, I kind of like Unbreakable a lot. Um, yeah, check this one out see it it's on streaming currently i think it's probably still in theaters um you can probably still catch it but uh yeah i'd i'd recommend seeing this one if you if it looked interesting to you give it a watch three and a half for that one and just like that we're on to our final segment um and to the final movie in the video um the final movie is the Dennis Hopper film from 1980, Out of the, Out of the Blue, which recently got a 
4K and Blu-ray release from Severin. Um, this is a really great movie. I recommend it in general, and I would say that, like, if you haven't seen Out of the Blue and you like movies, you're a movie person, you should see Out of the Blue. Period. That's what I have to say about Out of the Blue. To go a bit deeper, for people who don't know anything about Out of the Blue, or want to know more about Out of the Blue, basically, the film is about a teenage girl whose father, uh, her father's in prison for a drunk driving accident where he kills a couple kids. Uh, I, just, I don't know why that made me laugh, I promise. Uh, so, he goes to prison, and it's basically about her adjusting to life after he gets out of prison. Um, and, yeah, it's a, a disturbing, you know, down note, you know, just kind of unhinged drama. It was... It was great. I would say it's... I would, I'm would. i going to buy it on Blu-ray. I think that should say it all. Um, see Out of the Blue. This is a four out of five. This is like maybe a four and a half on a rewatch. I'll have to rewatch it and see. But that's it. That's it for now. That's the final, final segment. Now I have to edit this shit. And I'm not looking forward to that. Holy fuck. This is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. Signing off. Peace.